Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so, as you can tell by the title of today's video, it will be similar to what I've been uploading for the past several months, actually. I've been uploading videos titled like, Why this upcoming pattern change indicates a cold and snowy fall. Why this past spring indicates a cold slash snowy fall, or just a cold, or just a snowy fall. Well, now it's gonna be kind of an overall <clears throat> summary of all those videos. So, if you have not seen those videos, Stay tuned for this one, watch through it because I'll be outlining, I think I have five or six major uh, features <clears throat> that will be making this uh, this fall um, cold and snowy and why I think it will. Uh, before we do, however, get into this video, really consider subscribing to this channel, really consider uh, liking this video, <clears throat> and consider subscribing to this channel as it really helps this channel grow. And it really helps uh, me out knowing whether you like this content or not. So also consider liking and dropping a nice comment. So the first, <clears throat> the first uh, factor as to why I think this fall will be uh, fairly chilly, especially towards the eastern U.S. and northern U.S., uh, you could see that this is because it's a neutral enzo, and <clears throat> a neutral enzo basically means that the waters off South American uh, coastline, specifically by Peru and Edu Ecuador. Uh, off the of the western coast of those uh, those uh, countries, well, that's the only coastline they share, and uh, it should be the temperatures are you know <clears throat> not really a La Nina or an El Nino. A La Nina is when the waters are a little bit cooler than average. Uh, El Nino is usually when the waters are a little bit warmer than average, or it's 0 0.5 degrees or warmer to be exact, and 0 0.5 degrees or cooler to be exact for La Nina. And neutral somewhere in between. So, um, as you can see, <clears throat> this is what a neutral pattern looks like. I did not show you the graphic of, like I usually show you of, uh, what's, you know, the forecast is, but just take my word on it. It's a neutral pattern, and it's most likely going to continue through at least fall, <clears throat> most likely through winter, winter as well, but that's still a little bit more uncertain. And what this does is basically this sends the jet stream as a tendency to send the jet stream <clears throat> very far uh, to the north and then comes swinging back down uh, through the U.S. And this is just the averaged out jet stream throughout the winter of a neutral, but there's definitely going to be, you know, phases where it has a whole eastern U.S. There's definitely going to be parts where it's just, you know, the extreme northern U.S. in the, in the colder air. And notice also how it's wet and warm in the south, so this... Uh, <clears throat> you know, allows the storms, the, the waves that are riding across this subtropical jet stream, which uh, occurs usually around the equator, but then it moves up during a neutral pattern. <clears throat> you could see, well, not necessarily around the equator, that's more of the tropical jet stream. The subtropical is, you know, through around uh, Mexico and Florida, goes uh, like this during the summer, but you see, this one has a tendency to move up towards the north, and then this brings in wet and warm conditions, and uh, the storm again thrives in these conditions. We have a big nor'easter, say, spinning up, spinning uh, counterclockwise, and this sets the case up for a giant snow event possibly especially when the cold air is in place and we have that storm developing <clears throat> this not necessarily means a snowy fall or a snow or cold fall for the western third of the country but definitely for the two-thirds um, of the eastern country i think anywhere east of the rockies i would say is gonna be uh, a almost confident you know factor that's gonna be cooler than average other than maybe extreme portions of the south and maybe the extreme portions of the northeast like boston area um, but that's that too. I think will still get impacted by that. Um, the next factor, or this is basically, uh, you know, a similar representation because I forgot to mention this was actually what the winter pattern is for a neutral. <clears throat> but uh, the, the fall pattern, as you can see, has very similar implications. Very cold <clears throat> and uh, warm in the west, cold in the east, and again, the wet and warm conditions aren't represented by this graph here, but trust me, it would be wet, and if this were to occur again, the storms could produce some pretty big events. But also, you know, I, I want to emphasize the fact that during uh, big uh, big systems, during big uh, or big outbreaks of cold, usually there are some Alberta clippers, some disturbances that just ride that and come right through, <clears throat> dropping, you know, several inches of snow, and some areas don't even see snow in the fall, really, and they could still see, uh, you know, an inch, and now it could be considered a snowy fall. So it doesn't take a huge snowstorm to produce a snowy fall fall and so this is basically again uh the no august through november of uh all the neutral years for the fall and this is just a month by month breakdown you can see october not that chilly um it's actually the warmest out of all of the months i'm going to show you uh, it shows a pretty big origin in the in the west and this is allowing for a nice fall foliage you know 
nice fall temperatures. However, October may be a little bit chillier, but that's not always the case since last year. Yes, it was a different Enzo, but the winter overall seems very similar like it was last year. <clears throat> Just obviously some um, differences that aren't really too noticeable, but um, uh, basically last fall, if you remember, across much of the Midwest and Upper Plains, there was beautiful fall foliage. Uh, it was one, uh, Foliage. It was one of foliage. No, foliage. I, I could have been saying that wrong. Sorry, but it's been. It, it was beautiful fall foliage, and that uh, really led to a beautiful fall. I mean, last year was one of the beautiful, most beautiful falls I, I ever remember. My parents as well. So, uh, I, I, you know, it may be especially since October doesn't seem too awfully cold. You could see November is much more colder, <clears throat> and whatever is considered, you know, the good fall, it will come to a pretty abrupt ending by November. <clears throat> and November is still a hundred percent fall, even meteorology or astronomically <clears throat> and you could see that uh, much colder conditions and warmth is confined to several areas uh, northern California western Nevada area or U Nevada yeah and then parts of uh, Wyoming Colorado Idaho Montana and e extreme portions of northeastern Utah Utah uh, and that, so that's uh, you know <clears throat> that first factor the second factor I want to show you quickly explain <clears throat> is uh, the high the warm waters which are occurring right now across the Gulf of Alaska I got a comment <clears throat> a couple days ago, I think, that asked me if this is still going to play an impact <clears throat> on this year's winter, and most definitely is. If you were to look at the uh, the per per surface and precip map of this right now, you'd see that there's a high high pressure parked right there, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We have above average waters, and this is causing the warm air to rise, warm air rises, cool air falls. When the warm air rises, it causes a dome of heat, and usually a high pressure occurs that uh, that usually um, you know prevents the storms <clears throat> as the high pressure spins uh, clockwise. It's, it prevents really big storms to come in crashing in through with the jet stream. So the jet stream, in order to avoid this, must take a path to the north. And then in order to even itself out, kind of like equilibrium, in a sense, if you pull a rubber band one way, it will bounce back the other way. <clears throat> and this is what the jet, jet, jet stream does. This, this is what the jet stream does. It, this is kind of like its trigger, pull it back. It dips down trying to even itself out, and it becomes more uh, plateaued as it goes into Europe still, though, with a, a little bit of uh, unevenness. And, you know, this, uh, you know this, the jet stream may not be even up here, but usually... It needs to uh, either, you know, make way for this high pressure, which is usually by going up north rather than south. And this is why the western U.S. may be also not as cold and snowy as <clears throat> previously thought, including the northwest. But um, much of the eastern U.S., as you can see by this, would be would be rather chilly and, uh, and cold, especially towards the later part of the fall season. Which, you know, usually towards the later part of the fall season is when you really start getting those snow events. I mean, you don't really see a snowy fall in September. For most locations, extreme portions of the mountains, maybe, <clears throat> but for most, it's October and November, so that's what we're really concerned about. And this is also, uh, I took a bunch of uh, summers and springs that were very similar to this year. So basically, uh, a summer that has been cooler at the beginning, warmer towards the end. That's what this year's pattern was, kind of. And <clears throat> Also, the spring was very cool and wet, I added that into, and I found years like that were similar to this, and you can see some very big years, some 2014, 2013, those were, you know, one of the best, or one of the snowiest falls, one of the coldest falls, one of the best known for being a, uh, a, a very brutal winter as well. And you can see, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it will be this cold across the country this year. But it goes to show you that, based on what we've been seeing, it's leaning obviously clearly towards a colder fall, very clearly. And this would obviously, I don't think, you know, be. I mean, this literally right now is showing that almost 98% of the country being below average, and then like two percent or like a percent being neutral, and then. Uh, like 0.5% being a little bit above average right there in portions of California. So I don't think this will happen again. I think it'll be mostly centered across the <clears throat> the eastern part of the country. But this also goes to show you, I wanted to show this graphic, you know, not to only add to <clears throat> the more evidence that I have, but also to add to the fact that, you know, this will... This 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 uh, is not set in stone. The West could still see some cold temperatures, and there definitely will be phases where the West will be chillier than the East, and especially for the Northwest because if it develops more of a La Nina pattern and the waters turn out by the South American coast, which I was talking about earlier, turn out to be a little bit more cooler, then jet stream take uh, you know seems to take a more of a <clears throat> flattened pattern like this rather than bringing those temperatures into the Eastern U.S. as very very chilly and abrupt. But we'll have to see about that again. There's still quite a bit of 
of uh, undefined details that are, are not clearly, you know, forecastable yet at this point. You know, we're, we're September is still far out, but we're definitely on getting on the right path of things. And I think, okay, no. <clears throat> I also wanted to show you just uh, this last graphic. This I should have put this at the beginning, but this is the end zone neutral, which is uh, just kind of the graphic of what's of uh, the Climate Prediction Center and what NOAA and what the National Weather Service is all thinking about. You can see uh, October, September, uh, September, October, November, and October, November, December all seem pretty darn neutral. Uh, no really competition from an El Nino. <clears throat> they sh they're showing more of an El Nino, better for an El Nino chance, um, besides a neutral uh, than a La Nina. But I would, you know, I think this blue is at least even with this, with this red. I mean, <clears throat> you could see that uh, the neutral will be obviously dominating, and I think as well for at least a fall. But once we get towards winter right here, it decreases the chances to about 50%, and then El Nino is about at 30, and the La Nina is about at 15. I think the La Nina percentage should be higher. Uh, but you know that that's what we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see about that. Uh, there's many uh, forecasts that are still uh, yet to come out about this. You know they update every second Thursday of the month, so this will be uh, not this Thursday, but the next Thursday. So not today because today is Thursday, but next Thursday they'll come up with an update and I'll make a video on that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.